Okay, so flow is now fitted and we want to do our first drain down. So I just want to give you a quick recap of what should be done as a bit of prep and then I'll take you through this really simple process. First, in the case of a touring caravan, disconnect any water connections outside and this will make sure that any one-way valves are operating correctly in the water socket. Then, simply turn off your water pump and open the dump valve here to the water heater and that will make sure that that's drained also. Now while it's draining and if you have them just make sure that any diversion switches are pointing in the right direction. Then you want to make sure that all the water taps and outlets are closed around the property. When that's done just make sure to close the dump valve on the water heater again to seal the system once more. Now as a top tip remember to flick the lever closed with one finger and not lower it slowly with your thumb and forefinger and this will make sure that it is closed properly. And that's it, the little bit of prep is done, so you're now ready to drain down. So what you want to do now is switch flow on and it's going to fill the pipes and the water heater here with lots of fresh compressed air up to 15 psi. Now this is 5 psi under your water system's normal pressure, but it's enough to remove the water and clean the pipes. This should take about 30 seconds. Now remember any lubricants used in Flo's compressor are not only food grade but they're also verified and approved by the UK's Water Regulations Advisory Scheme and the National Caravan Council. So once Flo has reached 15 psi it will stop and this is your indication to open the first outlet, say the kitchen coal tap or faucet. Once we open it the air will push the water out cleaning the pipe behind it. Now while this is happening Flo will notice a drop in pressure and it will automatically restart and this will push out any remaining water. So once that outlet is drained, simply turn it off again to seal the system once more and then let Flo build up the pressure again to 15 psi. Again when it stops, you just open the next outlet and then simply repeat this process for all the outlets in the property. Now there really is no order to the outlets you drain but it does help to have a wee system in your head so that you don't leave any out. I just started the kitchen sink for the hot and cold, then the wash hand basin in the bathroom, the fresh water fed toilet and then the shower. Then I would open the dump valves on the water heater and the onboard water tank just to see if there's anything left in there. To finish just make sure that you drain any outside outlets if you have them. So when you're completely finished just switch flow off again and open all the outlets again to let them breathe. Once you get used to this process, it should pretty much only take about two minutes to complete. So now that I've done my little bit of prep, let's switch flow on and do our first drain down. Okay, so that's uh, flow has now built up to its pressure and it stopped. And that took about 30 seconds there to fill the water heater as well. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is uh, I'm going to drain the cold side. So I'm just going to move the tap all the way to the cold and I'm putting a, a, a jug underneath here because we're going to just uh, see what water is actually in the system. Once I open the tap, flow should automatically restart again uh, and start building up that pressure. Now, this is where this particular little cloth comes in. I'm going to try to stop um, bouncing the water around the place, um, but yet I'm going to try and collect the water at the same time. So let's see if this works. So you should hear flow start again. There we go. So it is now sensed that the pressure has dropped. But just topping it up with pressure. So we've closed that tap off. Um, what we're going to do now, and as you can see, we've got quite a sizable amount of uh, water out already. Um, what I'm going to do is turn the tap all the way to the hot and do the same thing now that it has built up in pressure. Flow has built up in pressure one more time, so we'll just open the cold. Again, we'll just use the cloth. Hopefully not get it around the mirrors. Okay, close it off. Okay, so that's it built back up again. So it only takes a few seconds to build up in pressure and we'll open up the hot side. Already we're overflowing. 
Okay, so my jug is starting to overflow, so I just want to pour it into this basin. When it comes to draining this particular toilet, very simply, just like you would open and close any other outlet um, in your particular property, you just simply press and hold this button. Now you will hear a distinct difference between the water coming out into the toilet and then the air following behind. When you hear the air coming behind, you know there's no more water in the mechanism, and so it is then frost protected. Okay, so it's crucially important to include the shower as part of your drain down. Um, to have any blown off joints or burst pipes behind here would be an absolute nightmare. Um, now, whenever I'm draining down the shower, what I like to do is actually remove this handset and hold it down uh, to the plug hole, and that prevents any water um, from, from pouring back into the tap itself. There is only one snag with that though. You have these little clips here. Um, now what I would suggest is that you remove that because all it's going to do, if I take off that particular shower head, it's going to stop me from getting past this point here. Now, the way to remove that is, uh, if you can see here, is just to unscrew this little nut here. Make sure you don't lose the little o-ring. Pull this back up, put the o-ring back in again and screw it back into place again. Um, now what that means is when we want to drain down the shower, what we can do is lift the handset off uh, and take it right down to the plug hole. Okay, so I just want to drain the shower here. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring the lever all of the way to the cold side. Bring down the handset. Now I'm able to freely do this and then just open the outlet. Okay, so we've done the cold, so I'm just going to bring it all the way to hot and drain. Okay, in the leisure industry today you'll find that there are three different types of toilets. The first here are what's known as cassette type toilets. Now, both of them will actually, when you flush, they will pass the effluent into a cassette. That is then removed by the owner uh, and then disposed of. Now, they draw their water from two different sources. The first one draws its water from its own individual tank, okay? And when it comes to draining down, that is something you'd need to have a look at your instruction handbook for, um, because it is a separate water system to what we're draining down with flow. The second type of toilet draws its water straight from the water supply, and that can come directly from the fresh water tank that's on board, or indeed the barrel outside. Now you will find that those ones are going to be electronic. Now, when it comes to flushing, the first one, as I said, that's an instruction handbook one. Um, but when it comes to draining this particular toilet, very simply, just like you would open and close any other outlet um, in your particular property, you just simply press and hold this button. Now, you will hear a distinct difference between the water coming out into the toilet and then the air following behind. When you hear the air coming behind, you know there's no more water in the mechanism, and so it is then frost protected. The third kind of toilet is just a domestic sort of toilet. The first two cassette types you will find in RVs, touring caravans and indeed boats. However, the third domestic kind of toilet you will only find on boats itself. Now these are very uncommon now because the effluent actually comes out of the side of the boat and for obvious reasons. How to drain that particular toilet, what you do is, now you won't flush it, don't flush it until the very end of the drain down procedure. But if you do need to drain it down, what you do is you simply lift off the lid of the cistern um, and you will see that there is a ball cock or a little float that will drop. As the toilet normally flushes, that will drop to the bottom and the ball cock will drop with it. And that is indeed what opens up the valve back here and allows the water to rise. Now, when it comes to actually draining that toilet, all you need to do, lift the cistern lid off and push the ball cock down or the little float down and what that will do is it will open the valve and it will draw that water through and the air will push the water through the mechanism and into the cistern itself. Like I said, it is only at the end of the entire drain down that you would actually flush that toilet. So now that you've carried out the drain down, it's important to carry out a little checklist just to make sure that you've drained everything. So make sure that you've drained all of the hot and cold taps in the kitchen, bathroom and shower. Now don't try to drain both at the same time by leaving the mixer in the middle because it's just not as effective. Also if you have a toilet that's connected to the main water supply, make sure to drain the electronic ones by pressing the flush button and the domestic ones by pushing the ball cocks or little floats down. But don't flush them until the very end of the drain down process. 
Now I also like to give the water heater and the onboard fresh water tank a drain also, just in case there's anything left in there. Now while you're there, just make sure to empty your filter in the winter time, just to make sure there's no excess water in there that could freeze. Now don't forget to drain any outside outlets as well, as they are becoming more and more popular these days. This brings me on to another important point. How do you leave your water system over the winter months? Well, as you know, we have been turning taps on and off throughout the whole drain down process. And at this point, all of those taps will be in the off position. As I mentioned before, if you're leaving the property over a cold spell, it's important that you open the dump valves and turn all of those taps back on again before you leave so that the pipes have a chance to breathe. Incidentally, oxygen in the air circulating through the pipes is also a great sterilizer. So now that everything is drained, in the case of a boat with a domestic toilet, it's now time to flush it. Finally, what I would do is pour half a glass of antifreeze down into the plug holes around the property, such as the shower and the sinks, etc. For boats with domestic toilets, pour the same amount down into the toilet bowl and the cistern and, and it doesn't have to be expensive antifreeze, just something basic out of an auto parts store. But I'll cover that and other winterizing techniques in another chapter. And that's it, that's the drain down carried out and that should keep you going through to your next trip or through to the next season. And of course, don't forget that a couple of the great benefits of using Flow regularly is that not only will you have the freshest of drinking water throughout the year, but you can also take advantage of your touring caravan, RV or boat throughout the winter months, simply draining for frost protection before you lay up again. Now in a later chapter, I'll show you what way to leave your water system during the winter season and quite a few other winterizing techniques that you may wish to know. Now these skills are very straightforward and once you make a little checklist on a post-it note, you can drain down your property in about two minutes and completely winterize it in about 15 minutes. Now you saw me collect the water here as we went along. So for this particular property, there's about 1.2 liters of water here. And this is fairly typical of any European sized touring caravans and RVs. Obviously larger RVs and boats will have slightly more depending on the size of the water system. But what we really should be looking at is the quality of the water removed. Don't be surprised if the water you get out is really grubby at the start, but that will change after the first use. And honestly, if used regularly, it will keep giving you fresh, clear water. Now, just so you know, Flow is completely covered by our nine month money back guarantee and our five year parts warranty. So if you do encounter any little problems, at least you know you're covered. In addition to that, we're very pleased to announce that you are now guaranteed a reduction in your insurance premiums if you install and use Flow Enduratech 636. So for more information on our insurance affiliates or if there's any other advice that you need, please remember to go to the website listed below. Here also you can find contact details for any technical support that you may need. And that's it, so I'll see you in the next chapter.